thank you thank you dr shalini for the kind words of introduction uh, i i mean uh, i thank uh, you and dr uh, rajiv chawla for inviting me to this uh, very in interesting session important session and also uh, i thank you for giving me an interesting topic to speak on uh, so i i hope to you know I, I, and and i'm uh, come, i mean i'm in a session which has uh, really great speakers uh, who are here so i hope i am able to live up to the to the expectation so uh, i will share my screen uh thank you uh, thank you uh, dr rajiv chawla for giving me a, a very interesting topic uh, which is uh, which states uh, you know whether statin plus as inhibitor plus gliflozin plus glutide we have seen uh, you know uh, benefits of all these classes of drugs and whether you know combining all this would lead to immortality so i'll try to uh, discuss that uh, by by looking at uh, you know uh, briefly discussing about the global burden of type 2 diabetes looking at the complications and how they impact the lifespan of a person and then you know the various interventions that we discuss about the role of statins the role of ras blockade and and the sglt2 inhibitors and glp1 ras which have really taken a a a, a big a brought about a big impact in the management of of type 2 diabetes have changed the algorithm for the for for uh, uh, and also the approach to uh to the uh, to the pharmacotherapy of type 2 diabetes and 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 uh, and then uh, then you know briefly discuss about how this could have a impact on the lifespan of an individual and can we really achieve immortality in diabetes so that's what i'll try to do uh, so if you look at uh, the issue of uh, diabetes uh, we know that uh, diabetes is a huge challenge dr hasnain has also just discussed about about the various aspects of of diabetes management he has uh, he has highlighted that uh, uh, the, uh, about about the glycemic control how how important the glycemic management is and uh, we have seen that uh, you know this is something which is always a elusive goal glycemic control is is very poor only only 20% or 30% uh, of of our patients actually reach the glycemic goals that we are looking at and there are many other issues that have to be looked into and and we find that um, you know if you look at our own patients in india we have we finding a significant uh, uh, problem in terms of you know the, the development of diabetes at at a lower bmi let lower at a at a younger age and the higher risk of cardiovascular complications in our patients and uh, all that leading to higher mortality as you can see with uh, poorer glycemic control uh, the risk of complications is is significantly increased we have we have information about this right from the days of the ukpedia study almost about 3 decades back we we have have understood this uh, issue that higher hbo1c leads to higher risk of complications and and it is also more beyond uh, the the microvascular complications what we are worried about is the the macrovascular disease particularly we are worried about the fact that uh, the macrovascular disease or the cardiovascular disease is much much uh, more common in uh, in asian indians with uh, as high as 20 to 50% of our population uh, of diabetics being affected by microvascular disease and and this contributing towards the major uh, being the major cause of morbidity and mortality and we have seen that uh, if, if you look at the life expectation in patient with diabetes across uh, different different studies and different uh, you know population based studies we can see that uh, that uh, the life expectation comes down down by about 6 to 8 years in the absence of cardiovascular disease and in the presence of cardiovascular disease probably it comes down by as high as as much as 12 years also in people with diabetes uh, with cardiovascular disease so this is the this is the extent of the uh, of the problem of uh, cardiovascular disease in people with diabetes and then uh, of uh, and and um, so how do we address this and uh, and and we have data from studies like the mr fit trial which has looked at uh, the various uh, risk factors and and shown how uh, multiple risk factors uh, actually uh, amplify the risk of of mortality in patients with diabetes so this is clearly seen this is a very very uh, old study and uh, and this is something which has which has been the basis for for understanding of of the cardiovascular risk factors in people with diabetes and uh, it's clearly showing us that that as the number of risk factors increase the the mortality from cardiovascular disease increases and and uh, and it is therefore necessary that we should address these these risk factors uh, and these risk factors which have a multiplication multiplicative effect on the on the cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular mortality 
and uh, then there was a lot of confusion in the in in the days uh, earlier days when we had uh, uh, results from different trials showing that glycemic control probably does not have a significant benefit on cardiovascular disease the uh, the accord trial the ukpd i mean the the adopt trial uh, are not showing adequate uh, uh, results the, the the accord study showing that there is increased mor mortality uh, amongst patients who are intensively mon monitored then the ro rosy glitters on fiasco all these actually uh, uh, caused a lot of confusion in uh, whether whether glycemic control is the one which we need to look at or whether we need to look beyond glycemic control and all these all these uh, trials actually uh, um, shown us that that uh, CV benefit does not come with the glycemic control, but the silver lining was was the follow up of the UK PDA study, which did show that you know early aggressive glycemic management did bring about an improvement in the uh, had a long term legacy effect in terms of improving even the cardiovascular outcomes, and that also heralded a new era where we understood that we need to look beyond glycemic control alone look at uh, a multi-factor intervention uh, rather than just look at uh, looking at uh, the glycemic control and uh, towards this end and uh, I, i'm actually discussing about the role of uh, these various interventions uh, on the lipid management interventions towards uh, blood pressure management and interventions towards uh, and then looking at the newer uh, newer therapies for for management of hyperglycemia so if you look at uh, the lipid uh, uh, lipid uh, trials uh, we have you know data from the earliest trials like the forest trial and uh, the lipid study the va hit study all of them showed that uh, showed that management of the uh, dyslipidemia uh, particularly with the statins there is there is a significant benefit even with uh, with gem fibrosil you could see some benefits uh, which was uh, shown there shown in the in uh, both in primary prevention and secondary prevention but the major benefit was seen in the secondary prevention trials uh, which looked at uh, uh, at, at at uh, the use of simvastatin or pravastatin where you could clearly see that with the reduction in cholesterol levels there was a significant benefit in uh, in the cardiovascular mort uh, cord cardiovascular morbidity and mortality this was in all patients and then you have got diabetes analysis of subgroup of patients with diabetes clearly showing again that the benefits were as good if not better in patients with diabetes as compared to the uh, to the entire population of uh, uh, who received these statins and particularly if you look at the hps trial uh, with simvastatin uh, uh, when you look at the analysis amongst the diabetes patients you see that 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 clearly the benefits in terms of uh, were clearly in terms of reducing the risk of uh, cardiovascular disease in patients with previous um, uh, previous um, uh, mi and those without previous cardiovascular disease also you could see that there was a clear benefit a 24% reduction in the risk of cardiovascular events with with the use of uh, with the use of uh, of uh, simvastatin and the hps trial also um, uh, showed that there was benefits beyond the cardiovascular risk reduction even on in terms of the stroke reduction and uh, and 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 also you could see that there was a clear reduction in in the mortality in patients in cardiovascular mortality the ascot la trial also showed uh, when you look at the subgroup analysis amongst the type uh, i mean among the diabetic patients again you see the clear benefit in terms of reduction of cardiovascular events with the use of atorvastatin in this case and the cards trial was was actually one a, a landmark trial which looked at you know using statins in people who were having uh, ldl cholesterol levels of less than 130 that the 130 was considered the the the, the cut off value at that point of time and and that study again clearly showed that uh, lowering the the uh, cardiovascular i mean lowering the lipid i mean ldl levels below below that did benefit even in patients without previous cardiovascular disease and clearly show, showed the benefit of the use of atorvastatin in this in this group of patients and uh, clear, the benefits were also shown by rosuvastatin in, in a primary prevention trial uh, rosuvastatin was was clearly showing the benefit of a 44 percent reduction in in the risk of uh, of the cardiovascular endpoints so this was however in uh, this trial did not include diabetic patients but uh, but did uh, bring in the, the the problem of new onset diabetes as a as a major challenge the hope t trial which looked at rosua statin and candy certain also again showed the benefit of of uh, of the use of uh, statins in terms of reducing the cardiovascular events by 24 percent 
then if you look at a meta analysis of all these studies uh, on uh, with the uh, risk of uh, with reduction in the cardiovascular events you find that there was a clear risk reduction uh, per 40 mg reduction in, uh, in, of which ldl cholesterol you see that there was a clear 25 to 30, uh, 20 to 25% reduction in the risk of uh, risk of major cardiovascular events coronary revascularization stroke and major vascular events all these coming down by about 20 to 25% so clearly statin the therapy reduces cardiovascular events in patients even without cardiovascular events and and clearly that has a benefit in terms of improving the survival of these patients role of ras blockade uh, is also again an important area to be looked at and if you look at the hope study probably that was one of the earlier studies that showed that uh, that ramipril could bring down the cardiovascular events and, uh, 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 and uh, cardiovascular mortality would be brought down by 26% with the use of ACE inhibitor like ramipril and uh, the micro hope study particularly which had uh, patients with diabetes you could clearly see the reduction in cv deaths brought down by, by to the tune of about 37% with the use of ramipril uh, and uh, as compared to all the other uh, uh, these effects were beyond the baseline therapy with all the other other forms of uh, other standards of care at that point of time and uh, if you look at uh, the addition of uh, aldosterone antagonists to the ACE inhibition probably uh, you know you have data to show the benef additional benefit that is there and today we have agents like finronone coming in i have not uh, uh, discussed that aspect uh, specifically but uh, that is again another another agent which has which has clearly shown that there is a clear benefit in terms of the uh, the cardiovascular and renal events in patients with uh, who are with diabetes uh, who are who are already on a ACE inhibitor with the addition of this molecule there is clear benefit now if you look at the uh, uh, meta analysis of all the ACE inhibitor trials what we see is that uh, there is a clear benefit in terms of uh, the the mortality uh, overall benefit with the ACE inhibitors although the, the the extent of benefit may be different with different uh, types of ACE inhibitors uh, uh, but if but on the other hand if you look at the ARBs although they may be very good in terms of reducing the renal outcomes in patients with diabetes what we see is that the uh, in most of these studies what we have seen is that there is a uh, there, there, there is uh, there is uh, a improvement in the renal outcomes in terms of uh, progression of renal disease but the cardiovascular benefits were not clearly standing out with the ACE inhibitor uh, with the ARBs and when you look at a meta analysis of uh, the all cause mortality in amongst the ACE inhibitors and ARBs you find that the benefits are more with the ACE inhibitors than the ARBs. So clearly you find that the ACE inhibitors stand out as compared to the ARBs in terms of the all-cause uh, mortality benefits in, in patients with. Now what we have also seen is that uh, even, even amongst the uh, amongst the uh, glycemic uh, I mean uh, agents that are used for glycemic control uh, we have now have uh, positive results seen with the with the SGLT2 inhibitors and the GLP-1 analogs putting them uh, uh, in in the category where where they clearly provide cardiovascular and renal benefits and uh, and reduce the uh, the um, the the uh, three point uh, maze and and cardiovascular deaths i mean amongst patients with diabetes so that has clearly changed our approach from being glucocentric towards being more of uh, of, of of cardiovascular and renal i mean looking at the cardio uh, the entire holistic picture of looking at the individual as such and not being just glucocentric and uh, so we could say that we have become vascular glucocentric towards uh, with providing complete metabolic care uh, from with with the use of the with the use of the newer drugs like the SGLT2 inhibitors which have benefits in terms of glucose lowering having an insulin independent mechanism action having a, 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 a effect on the blood pressure having effect on and having the cardiovascular and renal benefits and certainly effects on beyond this in terms of reducing inflammation and many other benefits that have been that have been noted in the various studies and there's a consistent reduction in hb1c with a lower risk of low risk of hypoglycemia and uh, clearly we have seen that uh, the, uh, this molecule this these molecules are now uh, becoming the first line therapy in in most of our patients particularly those with the, those with pre-existing cardiovascular disease and also uh, amongst the other patients also where we are looking at uh, weight being a major factor then we are looking at the use of these uh, these class of drugs and uh, there are several mechanisms which have been uh, potentially 
proposed to explain the the cardiovascular and renal benefits which have been shown in the in the CVOT trials, the renal outcome trials, which have clearly shown the. I mean, we have seen these benefits, and the mechanisms that have been proposed are are many many mechanisms have been proposed while we are while we are looking at uh, you know understanding their understanding their role further. But uh, clearly, we have seen these benefits, and uh, and uh, if you look at uh, just a glimpse of some of the trials, the Emparec trial, which which apart from the reduction three point mace, I mean the three point mace reduction was primarily driven by by the by, by the reduction in the uh, cardiovascular mor mortality and the all cause death was also came down significantly by 32 percent clearly showing the benefits and and this is a this is a uh, illustration showing the 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 outcomes and all the all the di all the different uh, cardiovascular outcome trials with empagliflozin can uh, the canagliflozin and also dapagliflozin and clearly we have seen all the benefit all of them having uh, similar benefits in terms of uh, the reduction heart failure and when you look at the reduction in three point mace uh, we clearly see that there is a the benefit in terms of uh, uh, secondary prevention is is much better is is uh, is standing out with uh, with with the uh, with empagliflozin in canvas and and also in the canvas trial with canagliflozin the declaratory however had had more of patients with the primary prevention cohort being going significantly being present and uh, those being uh, the 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 heterogeneity being mainly because of the type of patients that were enrolled in these trials but uh, in terms of the heart failure prevention we have seen that clearly all the all the three molecules stood out in terms of the heart failure benefits and we have <coughs> more details from the emperor heart study the we have uh, we have uh, the emperor study the the dapa ckd study and all these studies have clearly shown the 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 effects beyond uh, even, even in terms of the re reduction of heart failure and in terms of the uh, or in terms of the renal disease, uh, the reduction in the progression of renal disease, which was shown in, clearly shown in the DAPA CKD, and now with the EMPA CKD study, also the results being published yes, uh, just two days back, we clearly have seen the benefits with these agents. Now, coming to the role of GLP-1 RAs, as we have seen that these these are another important class of drugs which have which have shown their benefits. We have seen their benefits in terms of uh, uh, the all the benefits that we have seen. Uh, the fact that they address six out of the eight core defects and thereby, you know, have proved to be very good agents in terms of uh, glycemic reduction and also in terms of reducing the uh, improving satiety, reducing hunger, and having a significant effect on the weight uh, weight reduction. And uh, both dilaglutide, semaglutide have shown these these benefits in terms of because of their effects on the on the hypothalamic centers probably because of the being small molecules crossing the uh, crossing the blood brain barrier and having direct effects on the on the uh, on the central appetite regulation they have clearly shown in in the phase 3 programs they have shown clear benefits in terms of the weight reduction also which probably is contributing significantly uh, beyond the glycemic uh, benefit uh, uh, towards 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 the the cardiovascular benefits that we have seen and we have uh, clear data on from the cardiovascular outcome trials with a uh, leader trial showing a clear reduction in the cardiovascular deaths by 22 percent even the um, uh, the the sustained sustain six trial showing showing, showing a, a, a improvement in the three point maze although the cardio uh, the cardiovascular deaths and all cause mortality uh, did not change much but but the three point maze did did come down with the, with the use of uh, uh, injectable semaglutide and we are awaiting the long term outcome trial with the, with the oral semaglutide the soul trial while we await for that we have, we, we also have seen new excitement with the use of this dual agonism with SGLT, I mean with GLP-1 RA and the GIP-1 uh, receptor uh, agonism, which is uh, coming in the form of the of this molecule called tirzeptide, which has clearly shown a very good glycemic benefit in terms of reducing the HB1C by 2 to 2.6 percent, and uh, so that almost 97 percent of patients reaching the glycemic target of less than 7 percent, and even almost 40 to 50 percent of patients reaching reaching a target of less than 5.7 percent indicating that they're going into a remission and uh, the major benefit is probably obtained because of the weight weight benefit that is seen with these uh, with this molecule in terms of uh, you know almost uh, a, uh, a 15 to 20 percent uh, almost 12 to 18 kg weight reduction seen with different doses of uh, of tirzeptide and uh, with 
more than 90% of patients reaching a target of more than 5% weight loss and and more than 15% weight loss also happening in about 40% of patients so having looked at these three agents let us look at what actually i mean as you look at immortality i mean this has always been a quest for immortality and we see that aging causes a lot of changes there are a lot of changes which are happening beyond uh, i mean in the sense that uh, beyond the changes because of diabetes there are changes happening because of uh, various other factors the stem cell decrease the decrease in telomere lengths uh, but and and we we have, we have several therapies that have been tried uh, one of the important ones is calorie restriction has been important important issue which has uh, led to uh, improving the life span and exercise has been another important uh, important factor medications like the ones which you have speak uh, spoken of so can we be become immortal so uh, we might be able to disguise some of the issues uh, that ha- that come with the aging but uh, but 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 uh, you know we st- still are this goal of being immortal is still elusive we have uh, various proven uh, therapies as we spoke about lifestyle spoke about exercise and even when you look at uh, you know data from uh, the steno2 trial where we had a multifactorial intervention not with the use of uh, use of the newer glucose lowering therapies but with statin with uh, with a, with uh, good glycemic control with uh, with uh, the older therapies and also with uh, hypertension management we could see that there was at least clear 12 years gain in life expectation with uh, with the use of uh, with a multifactorial ex- ex- uh, intervention uh, on the 21 year of follow up we find that there was a improvement in lifespan by almost 7.9 years gain in lifespan and uh, the first cv event was postponed by almost 8 years so this clearly shows that you know although we don't have a intervention of this sort uh, looking at the addition of uh, addition of uh, sglt2 inhibitor and a glp1 analog to the existing therapies but uh, the earlier but a study like the steno2 study gives us a clue that we can add life to uh, add years to life and we should also you know uh, be happy that we are able to add life to the years so i think on that note i would say that you know while immortality is still an elusive goal we should uh, focus on the fact that we are able to we are with the current therapies and with the combination that we're looking at we are being we have been a- able to add years to life and also the most important part is that we have been able to add life to the years thank you thank you all for the patient hearing and